Hello, Egyptology lovers. Welcome to another translation, but this time we're going to do something a little bit different. This is a translation from an inscription at the Wadi Hammamat near Thebes. Wadi Hammamat was a transit system that was used for many different quarries of stone, usually for sarcophagus or lids or many other objects. They even mined for gold, turquoise, and copper over there. So this one here has an inscription, actually a two-part inscription. Uh, this one large section here, which starts on the right and ends at this column on the left, and then a continuation of the inscription much later on by the same king, uh, by the same expedition that went out to do this inscription here, and there's three columns here. This inscription belongs to uh, the pharaoh Montuhotep IV. He is a pharaoh of the 11th dynasty who reigned for about seven years. If you want a specific time period, uh, this is, of course, the Middle Kingdom. So he reigned between 1997 to 1991 BC. And this inscription of his is indicated here over here on top by the date, his titles on this also horizontal, and then what happened in the expedition uh, in these columns over here, which continue on to this one as well. So we're going to go ahead and translate it, starting from the very top, which always provides the year, and then follows by the title. So stay tuned for that translation. All right, starting on the very top here, we have the word year, number two. Here we have the symbol of the month, two, of the season of Achet, which is the flooding season, and day 15 right over here. And now we move on to the horizontal one over here inside the box. These are the five names of the pharaoh Montuhotep. All pharaohs after the fourth dynasty had five names, starting with the oldest being the Horus name, and you can see the Horus symbol. He is the lord of the two lands. Then you get the two sister names, or the Nepti, and over here it says the two ladies, also, the mistresses of the two land. Then we have the golden Horus name that says the golden one of the gods. So the golden one of the gods. And then we come to the throne name, which is the king of upper and lower Egypt, the Sej and the Bee. And here's his name, neb ta -u -re, lord of the two lands of Re. And finally, we come to his personal name, which is the Sare name. And here you have Montu Hotep, which means Montu, which is a war god, is content. All right, so now let's begin over here on the right with the first column of the translation. You always read into the hieroglyphs to know their direction. And over here, it starts with the command that his majesty erected this stella for his father, Min, who's the god of fertility, who is the lord of the foreign lands in this mountain. Continuing here to the second column, the noble one, the primeval, the primeval one, or the one from the origin of time, the primordial one, you could say, the foremost of his place in the land of the inhabitants of the horizon, which are the divine ones, who is in the divine booth, that is endowed with life. And then the divine nest of Horus. So the Horus and his nest. Where divinely thrives this God in it. His place, which is pure of entertainment, which is on top. Of the mountains of the land of the god in order to satisfy this is all one word satisfy his ka and exalted is the god according to his desire as he does now the king, for upon the great seat and at the head of the places of the lasting monuments, who is the efficient God and the Lord of joy, who is great of terror or fear and great of joy, 
who is heir to Horus in his two lands and who is raised, continues over here, raised by the goddess Isis, who is the mother of Min, who is the god of fertility and the god of the Wadi Hamamat, where the inscription is located, who is great of magic for the royalty or by the royalty, which continues over here, of the two banks, which are the two banks of the Nile of Horus, who is the king of upper and the king of lower Egypt. And here's his throne name again, which is Neb Ta'ul Ta'uwi Re, which is the lord of the two lands of Re. And then continues here, life like Re forever. Continuing up here, in saying, or saying, or was said, in giving the majesty to go forth, the noble one, or nobleman, or the noble one, or the prince, the overseer of the city, the vizier, and the overseer of the works, the king's Favorite, and here we have the name of the person that was responsible for the expedition, Amenemhat, Amenemhat, which means Amun is in front. With the army of, this here it says, 10,000 men. This is the Jeba finger, which represents the number 10,000, so 10,000 men. So an army of 10,000 men was sent to this expedition at the Wadi Hamamat. Now they were sent to the southern gnome of Upper Egypt. So these are together, Upper Egypt. And that would be in the south of Egypt. And to the south of the house of Wabu, which goes over here, Wabu. And this refers to the city of Ozerinkis. Wabu, this is the city of the fish, or the Ozerinkus fish. Two, bring for him, the word him is not here, but it's for him, a noble stone from the pure rock, which is therein found in this mountain, which was made by men of perfection, or its perfection, intended for a sarcophagus. Now the word for sarcophagus during, during the middle kingdom of the 11th dynasty was referred to as the Lord of Life, where the Egyptians saw a sarcophagus as being a mechanism for bringing a, a mummy back to life. The Greeks on the opposite side, or Romans, saw it as a way of destroying life. So sarcophagus here means Lord of life. So a stone of perfection was taken from the mountain and was basically turned into a sarcophagus, as it says here. And it continues to say, which it evokes eternity more than monuments. So pretty much what I said before, the Neb Anch, which is the sarcophagus, evokes eternity more than monuments. So they last basically evoking the mummy to have more life than any mon monument on earth. Continuing up here, in the divine temples of Upper Egypt, which is again in the south, as an envoy for the king who was on top of the two lands or in command of the two lands. And to bring to him what he desires from the mountainous regions for his father, Min. Now, he made, which is Amenemhat, who is the owner of this stella, who carved this here for the king. He made... A stella, which is not written here, the word stella, but we know it's implied, as his monument for his father, Min, the Coptite, 
This refers to the city of Copt or Coptus, which is near the Wadi Hammamat, who is the lord of the mountainous regions and who is the master of Iunu or Anu. And may he be made, now this is broken, but we can extrapolate from other uh, steli that says, may he be made to live a great many years living like Ray forever. So now this is the complete the completion of the first section. Now, they do come back again and many few days later and we'll continue with the inscription, uh, what it says in the next three columns on the left. Now, moving on to the second section, Amenemhat came back with his soldiers and completed the task of removing or carving out a lid of a sarcophagus from the mountain. Uh, they did get a sarcophagus uh, and they also got a lid. And here it says day 27, so about 12 days later, it says that they lowered, they lowered a lid of this sarcophagus in stone, which was four cubits wide by eight cubits wide and by two cubits wide. Cubit measurement is one cubit is 53.3 or two. 53.5 centimeters. So that was the size of the lid that they had. So you can guess the measurement there. Now, when they extracted the stone of this measurement, they finished and they left. And it says what they did. Continuing here, it says, after departing or going forth from the work site, which refers to the Wadi Hamamat, they had cut up calves, they had slaughtered goats, so and they also gave incense upon the flame or the burning. So they burnt incense. All right, now to complete the stella, Amenemhat, who lowered the lid of the sarcophagus, left the work site, made some burnt offering, and slaughtered some animals, uh, made some offering, burnt some incense for the god Min, and then describes his departure. Therefore, an army of 3,000 of sailors from the gnomes of the Delta, which is in Lower Egypt, transported him to safety to Egypt. And here you have the name of Egypt, which is common ap uh, apart from, which is Kemet or Deshret, but you also have Tamari. You'll see this inscription everywhere and a lot of stelis or steely everywhere in Egypt, this means the beloved land. And there is the completion of the stella. Uh, this was carved at the Wadi Hamamat or Montuhotep IV by the vizier or a nobleman or the close companion to the king, Amenemhat. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them.